trades have a running a business, of course, is trying to find and keep great people. So what is the solution to what is an ongoing problem for so many small businesses and medium sized businesses, but we're talking about tradies today. It is our tradies Tuesday segment. We're doing it on Monday because tomorrow is the cup and no one talks about anything except for horses. Miles Primrose from Business Site joins us. Good to see you. Good morning. And uh, look, I find one of the problems with trades is that because so many of them are really micro businesses, they're quite small that they're not actually investing enough time and energy into the right things. Um, one of the first things is, and we spoke about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, is the businesses that want the great people to come on board, they need to create a business that's inspiring because otherwise you're just going to get anybody that wants to come along, mm. turn up, hopefully they turn up, mm. and then uh, they'll, they'll go home. And you don't want the workers. You want the, the great people, want the, the great uh, workers that are going to work for them. It's also about attitude, right? We're talking about tradies so on the building site. You want to have a good culture, don't you? And that's so important. I've grown up on building sites with my dad, and sometimes there is not a great culture out there. And that kind of fight between the chippies and the sparkies and the plumbers can be, well, my dad's a painter, so he had nothing nowhere. <laughs> And that's that's uh, social media is making that worse these days. With the uh, you can see the the pyramids of you know who's the most educated and uh, <laughs> you know you've got the plumbers at the top that's and then it. the electricians down the bottom. That's and it. There's cyber no, bullying. Absolutely, tradie bullying. Um, and look, the other thing is once you've worked out how you're going to inspire these people, the second thing is you need to um, document certain things in your business because there's nothing worse than me saying, Aaron, okay, I'm going to come and work for you on Monday. Um, or uh, we've agreed on whatever and nothing's documented and then yeah. three months down the track I'm so, well, Where's this you said you were going to pay me this and I thought I was going to get this super and what about this bonus and this type of stuff? So what you're saying is too much of it is hey mate need your Monday. Can you jump in? Yep Let's agree on a price nothing's formalized and then it comes back to bite you cowboys cowboys. Yes Well, it's sort of like it. It's too loose. Mm. There's there's nothing nothing formal and the, some people put What's the, the effect on that? Who ends up losing in that situation? Because how does it usually turn out? I mean, obviously you can lose a friendship out of that mm. sort of situation, but um, it, does it end up in legal? It, it can. I mean, both sides end up uh, losing in the end. Yeah. The person that's done all the work is, is the first person to get the impact. But then later on, the, the employer, um, as you know, when you employ somebody, it's not just the cost of employing them. If you have to get somebody else, you've got to retrain them, you've got to invest time. and. People don't look at that. They're looking so much at what's happening right now. They don't look at what they need to do long term to actually make things smooth out mm. a, a bit later on. Um, and the, the third thing is it's about actually getting to know your employee. Now, getting to know because a lot of people say they want more money or they want a higher, higher rate or whatever. Some people want to be mentored. Some people want recognition. Um, some people say, let's start something in our business where we're going to look after the um, the environment once a quarter or something like that. So people say it's always about money, but if you're paying people on time, not everybody's money driven. No, that's right. And there's also the other saying that Richard Branson's been putting out on his uh, social media I saw over the weekend, which is um, teach people the skills so that they could leave, but treat them well so they don't leave. Absolutely. Essentially, because a lot of businesses, you know, they, they are scared of training, they're scared of mentoring, they're scared of teaching because they don't want to teach someone who then leaves. But then what if you don't teach them or train them and they stay? That well, kind look, of that's the biggest issue. The, the, when you say that, look, I've got a client that's actually stayed with me for 12 years, and uh, which is incredible. and. Um, at the end of each year, he writes me a check. He literally does still give me a check, really? which I think wow. is incredible. Um, like your, your I'm holding Christmas this bonus. I'm holding this bit of paper, thinking you're the only person that's given me a check in seven years. But anyway, does it uh, clear or is that? It does. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of it, he's a plumber and he's got uh, quite a successful plumbing business. Right. A lot of his friends say, "Why would you do that?" T after ten years later, relationships. Well, that's it's relationships. But he said, um, when I started, he said I was working 90, 95 hours a week. Um, and he said, I have a young family and I wasn't seeing my family. He said, I take three or four holidays a year. I'm the father now. Um, I, my priorities are in line. Mm. Uh, I'm making money. I've put um, three uh, units into a self-managed super fund. Um, and he said, it's an investment. Mm. And he said, the main thing is, he said, uh, it's about accountability. He said, you know, if I'm not doing something a certain way, like, you know, I'll get a phone call or a, or a text or whatever mm, the case mm. may be. I think the other aspect as well when it comes to keeping staff and the importance of it, not just for 
uh, your bottom line and the frustration of having to teach a new person what you had trained the old person as well. Is it from the customer perspective as well? If you're someone who has customers that are regularly the same people, they like to see that you have the same team. It shows the trust and also it means that you can train up these people to be your 2IC so you don't have to be in every meeting. Absolutely, and it makes a difference if they can see those team members are happy. That's, that's uh, people want to deal with happy people. Um, and uh, the, the up- It's not how I like to run things here at Ticker, mate. I like to crack the whip. Oh, look, that's what I've heard, but I'm here anyway. Um, <laughs> Mostly at the guests. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing is also um, running your business as a business. Uh, with the small businesses of, say, less than seven people, um, you know, they will go to the pub for a Parma and they'll have a few drinks and things just get a little bit loose sometimes. Yes. Um, and then you can still do that, but there needs to be some rules. There yeah. needs to be some... some uh, so don't run the business like a family, I guess, as you're saying. Exactly. And, and to make sure that there is a reminder, even during those times, that um, and, and the, the guys who get together, my dad always says, God, there are dickheads who get together on building sites. <laughs> Once you get a bunch of guys together, anything can happen, particularly on a Friday after a tough week and you chuck some booze into the mix as well. They can be dangerous times. I, I, w- I will say that uh, one of my clients, he's got close to 30 employees now and he's got all these branded vans and he was driving down the Monash freeway and uh, he was actually trying to, and his, his 2IC was in front of him and they'd knocked off early and they weren't being super silly, but they were weaving in and out of, out of traffic. Mm. And there's a lady that saw the um, branding on the side yeah. and when she got home, she called the 1300 number and she made a complaint that these electricians were driving in a really erratic fashion. Exactly. On the back of the Telstra vans, they used to, I don't know if they still do, but they used to have, you know, we like to drive safely. If you see any issues, you know, ring this number. It reminds me, speaking of funny behavior on a Friday, um, at uh, one of the TV networks years ago after a Christmas party, the lads from News Exchange got into one of the satellite trucks with the satellite on the roof of the four wheel drive and a and decided to take it through the Macca's drive through which of course the satellite fell off and caused half a million dollars damage and that was the end of their careers. So. That's not good. <laughs> I, I, I really think what all this comes down to in the end, it comes down to one word, which is perception. Yeah. Like uh, the perception of the business, like is the business run well? Mm. Um, and you can tell that through are these people um, inspired? You, you can tell this. And respect. Right? Absolutely. It comes down to respect. Hmm. If you as a boss are too matesy with everybody, you're probably not going to be respected and they're probably going to think they can get away with murder, right? But at the same time, if you have just that little bit of separation, it comes to respect. Absolutely. Yeah. Miles, what's your tip for tomorrow? Uh, don't go. Don't go. Are you one of these? Empty, oh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't mean like that. Are you no, going to no. be out the front chanting? No, no. I don't mean like that. Oh. I mean, I prefer to stay sober and not lose my money. That's, that's what I mean. <laughs> Not going out with you on a Friday night, Miles. Thanks <laughs> so much for that. We'll talk to you again soon. We'll take a break here on Ticker when we come back. The office got rid of me. Oh, I'm back now. Uh, we'll take a break when we come back. We'll uh, see. I didn't crack the whip. Uh, we'll be uh, looking at the news headlines and uh, the big news that's come from Westpac. That's next.
This is Ticker, this Monday business news for you. Here's what you need to know. Small businesses and taxpayers unfairly targeted by the ATO will have greater access to compensation under a beefed up scheme to include an independent review. The Morrison government will soon unveil sweeping reforms to the compensation process over concerns the ATO has made mistakes which in some cases have crippled small business. Saudi Aramco could be one of the world's biggest IPOs after confirming plans to list on the Riyadh Stock Exchange. The state-owned oil giant will determine the IPO launch price after registering interest from investors. And Airbnb will ban house parties and take other steps to safeguard hosts and guests after five people died at a Halloween party hosted by a Californian home from Airbnb. The CEO of Airbnb says a company's redoubling efforts to combat unauthorized parties. Let's check the weather forecast now for the start of your week. Monday, today in Melbourne, sunny and 18 degrees. Sydney, 24 degrees and sunny. Brisbane, 29 degrees and sunny. Perth, 25 degrees and Adelaide, 19 degrees as well. Let's check the bookmark segment before we head off for you today as well uh, to see what's happening in our bookmark segment. If we can, there it is. Uh, and we start off with the Australian Financial Review. Westpac raising $2.5 billion profit sides to 15%, uh, as we mentioned. Uh, also, a value manager's test of faith rewarded as well. Uh, and huge trade deal could go ahead without India there too. Let's have a look finally at the business section of the Australian today. Uh, see what's there. Westpac and trading hold profit falls 15%. That's the big news out of Westpac today, uh, as well as the capital raising of $2.5 billion. Millionaire homeowners claim $6.3 billion in pensions as well. And dark vegans won't take a punt on this. Is a commentary there about the Melbourne Cup. Say no to the cup is the cartoon at the top. Just a reminder, today's program brought to you by Studio Hawk Australia's largest dedicated SEO specialist agency and day trade scans real-time ASX stock screener for traders and investors. All views expressed on the program by hosts and guests belong to us. That is it for Morning Express for today. Do, of course, catch up across the day with breaking news. You can head to the Ticker app, head to the iOS store and download it if you are watching us on Twitter at the moment. Uh, just head to Ticker TV in the App Store and you will be able to download it with a year subscription to our service as well. Lunchtime Express coming up this afternoon. Our special Cup Eve edition, Laura Aquino and myself. And then Natalie Giddings joins us, 1 o'clock Australian Eastern Daylight Time for their brand new show, Remarkable Influences, where we pull back the story to hear some of the business insights and find out about the influences, of course, were paid by the big companies to get us involved. That's it from me. I'll see you soon.